And we are live. Hello and welcome to the Birmingham Cameras Facebook Live video. I'm the Birmingham Cameras Store Ambassador, Jules Call, and we are here for a very exciting event because today is the launch of the brand new Nikon D850. Now I'm joined by a very special guest, Nikon expert. Uh, Adrian Gaynor is here to tell us absolutely everything that we need to know about this camera. You're the man in the know, isn't that right? Uh, well, I hope so. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So we were very lucky in Birmingham cameras in store today that you came with the camera now there's only one in the whole country at the moment so a lot of people came into the store to drool over it and find out all about it but you are going to give us all of the specs for those who weren't able to make it in store today so you're very interesting in the fact that it's 30 years a photographer 700 weddings is that right and counting <laughs> Actually, I joined a camera club when I was 11 years old. Okay. So if you count that, it's just a hair over 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> now, why did you choose Nikon as your brand to go to and stick with for all of these years? Well, at the time when I made a decision to become a professional, it is to a certain extent still the case, but at that time it was definitely the go-to camera. And um, it was a big day when I got my first Nikon camera. Was, I was very proud of that day. And it had a reputation for superb optics, reliability. And if you looked at the, the whole slew of photographers occupying the, uh, the digital field at the time, the, the professional field at the time, there weren't really that many other people using Canons and Pentax and other, other makes. It was basically just Nikon. So it had to be Nikon. Mm -hmm. And I learned an interesting thing, and I wonder with all of the lenses that you have picked up over the years, that you can still use any Nikon lens on anybody, no matter from, you, you know, whatever, from years ago. Yeah. And celebrating the 100 years of Nikon as well this year. Uh, so fantastic. all those old lenses can still be used today. Yeah, it's actually a claim to fame that not many manufacturers can boast. But all of the lenses manufactured since 1958 will go on this particular fit on this camera it's the same f mount wow. uh, they won't all work on this camera uh, using all of the functions available on this camera but it's the same mount and they'll all go on there so keeping the, the sort of uh, allowing people to use their older lenses is always something that nikon have, have carried forward and it's a great quality mm. and another interesting fact that uh, i learned today is that all photographs taken by nasa are on Nikons. Absolutely. Yeah, so all those amazing shots that you see from the space stations and yeah. everything like that, they're Nikons. Yeah, when I love all those little random photography bits of information oh, and fun it, facts is, and stuff. Isn't it cool? I mean, it's a brand that literally is out of this world. Mm -hmm. But when you see shots of the space station, uh, you'll see they have their cameras velcroed to the side of the actual station itself. They're all Nikons. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So the D850, now there's been an awful lot of hype about this camera, a huge amount of anticipation, and we are going to go through all the specs of what's new and improved about this camera. But first of all, we're going to show you, now we saw that a very impressive video at the start uh, showing what the camera can do, but we're going to go through some photographs that you have taken. And these are absolutely amazing, because I was asking you, you, when did you get your hands on this camera? And only last week. That's right. <laughs> so what did you do? <laughs> well, basically, it's such an exciting camera. Um, guilty as charged, I've found myself using it just about every waking moment. Uh, it's that type of camera. Um, you want to use it. It's a very nice camera to use. So I did have a day off. Um, the first couple of shots that you'll see uh, were actually taken the first day I got the camera as light was falling. Um, uh, that was actually in Derby by the riverside. And you'll notice there's a very warm hue to that photograph. I was actually using the shaded uh, color temperature in the white balance, even though it wasn't in shade, to yield that very warm result. Um, I actually started shooting. Um, we'll discuss the silent uh, shooting capability in a minute on a tripod at 32 ISO. Um, but then I thought, I thought I'm going to go up from here and see what this camera can do. So the image that you just saw was actually taken at 12,800 ISO. Wow. And when you scrutinize the image and go in and look at the detail, it is mind blowing. Mm -hmm. It is really great. It holds its detail very well. And the dynamic range is superb. Okay, let's have a look at the next uh, picture. 
Again, now, where's this one? Well, that's the same thing. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a mission here because I've just got my hands on the camera and you, uh, you know, I'm all excited about <laughs> it. Honestly, I was shooting and it had a smile on my face at the same time. Yeah, just snapping everything in sight. Yeah, and uh, on this particular shot, um, I don't know if the viewers at home can see, but every detail in the brickwork is there. Um, on one of the subsequent files, you don't have it here, but there was a bus in the background with a, a destination illuminated on the side window. And uh, you could actually read the destination. And clearly and perfectly. Phenomenal. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I love this next one with the sunset sky and the sea. This is spectacular. Well, thanks very much. It's actually my hometown, Portishead. Oh. And uh, I actually live just about ooh, 100 meters from where the shot was taken. Uh, it's a sunrise. Um, what lens did you have on for this? Actually, I think that was that's two files sandwiched together. Okay. With a 24 to 72 8 on now, each file. Presumably, if this is so close to where you live, have you shot this scene before? Yeah, I have. And now, what difference would you notice switching now to the D850 in you know from using previous bodies and lenses before? What what more has it captured? Would you say with the D850? There's definitely a difference in the resolving power. So okay. when you go into the fine detail, it tends to hold the detail just a little bit finer. And I, I, would, I would say that there's probably a little bit better dynamic range, or at least what I'm used to on the, the D810, probably a little bit better. Okay. Um, so it's just superb looking files, yeah. you know, yeah. Brilliant, and another superb file coming up here. Now tell us about this shot. Well, again, um, that is actually a color image, but it looks almost monochromatic. It does. Because of the nature of the light. Again, it's, the sun's just coming up. Uh, and it's beautiful because it's just made that boat just pop. Yeah, <gasps> it, it looks kind of precarious there, mm, but yeah. uh, Portishead has the second highest tide of any port in the world. Wow. And it's up to 14, 15 meters at times. So the water, when it's at high tide, is far above the bank you see there. And at, of course, when it's low tide, that boat just goes right down and sits on the bottom. Uh, but if you go into that file, you can actually see uh, the fine detail on the boat. It's quite stunning, actually. Kay. Quite amazing. Superb. OK, and the next one now, another beautiful sunset. This is stunning. Actually, now, that, as I mentioned, I was so excited about using this camera that um, on that particular day off, which are few and far between, I was using the D850 uh, from sun up to sundown. We're still in the sun up phase here. Oh, wow. Okay. So that is actually a sunrise uh, pointing towards uh, Avonmouth, which is a dock just across the way from where I live. Okay, and let's have a look at the next one and see yeah. if I can guess if it's a sunrise or a sunset. Hmm, I'm going to say sunset. No, you'd no. be wrong. <laughs> it's just, it was such. Actually, as you're looking at that file, if you look at all of the contrails in the sky, mm -hmm. I'm in the Bristol area. All of those contrails are westbound. That's all the early, early morning traffic going into Heathrow. And it helps to sort of build on what is already a very smoky looking sky. But what we're looking at is pretty much in chronological order. So we're actually working through the day. So it's still sunrise. OK, and let's see where you went to shoot next. Wow. Now, this again is having similar effect to the previous one that we looked at with the boat. Yep. But it could also, it has that whole monochromatic feel to it and the lines and everything. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. So what lens, what, were you, what, what, what was the whole composition of this shot? Well, that was using a 70 to 200 f2.8 okay. uh, to get a slightly different look, a different depth of field and a, a, you know, a closer look. Um, and again, it's the, the dynamic range on that particular photograph and particularly the detail is astounding. Yeah, that's amazing. And now the next one, we've got some lovely boats and reflections going on here. Now, I can even see just from looking at the monitor here that I can, the detail in this must be just phenomenal. It is, yeah. it is. I'm actually getting hungry here, so I'm on my way home for breakfast. <laughs> um, but it's, again, I'm just living off camera to the right-hand side as you look at this image. I'm walking over a lock that keeps the level of that harbor where it should be. And I just noticed that the reflection looked pretty good as far as, you know, having a nice calm look and uh, took the photograph. And it, you're right, the detail's amazing. Mm. And I believe we have another reflection shot as well to have a look at. So what time of day is this? Oh, well that one snuck in there. Okay, that's a different day. Caught oh. me off guard with that one. Okay. But it's actually the same location. Oh, but, okay. Uh, that's in the evening. 
Right. So you're looking at the, the sort of remnants of a sort of marmalade sky creeping in there on the reflection on the water. Okay. And I think the next shot that we have is of a beautiful girl. She is. And the detail in that eye. So can you tell me how many feet away were you standing for this uh, shot? I'd say probably about 20 feet away. Wow. With a, a, there was a 70 to 200 to 8. And yeah, that was just the detail that this camera can record is mind-blowing. Like, because I'm just looking at like every detail there in every single eyelash. Yeah. Um, everything. Wow, and the reflection and everything in the eye. Sure, you can actually see me taking the photograph in the eye. Oh if wow! Look very <laughs> that is brilliant. So they are some incredibly impressive shots. Thank there. you. Thank so you very much. now let's go through what everybody wants to know: all the tech spec stuff. Sure. So when we talk about the D850, what we really want to know is what is new and improved about it in comparison to previous Nikon cameras. So let's talk about resolution first of all. Okay. Well, basically what we have on the D850 is a 45.7 megapixel sensor, um, which is very, very high resolution. It's amongst the highest of all DSLRs. Um, and it's, it's certainly eclipsed anything that's come out of the Nikon factory before. And so the design brief was to provide a camera that has that incredible detail, ability to record detail, but at the same time to have a sensor that has a great dynamic range, as we've seen from some of the hurried photographs that I took in my day off. Um, the files that it yields are not just resplendent in their detail, but they've got great dynamic range and great tonal balance. Mm -hmm. So it's um, a brand new sensor designed and developed in-house in with Nikon and it's 45.7 megapixels. Okay, now the camera itself, for anybody who is familiar with Nikon and has been a user for years, are there any surprises on the body itself or the actual setup, the feel to the camera, or would, do you think people just adapt to it pretty quickly or any other new features and buttons and stuff on the actual physical side of the camera? Actually, if um, this camera will attract, you know, a buying audience from of course, not just existing Nikon users, but w users, but we're hoping from other manufacturers as well. And the buttons are laid out in such a way that they will become very familiar with them easily. For those people that do have Nikon cameras at the moment, uh, whether it be a D500 or a D800, there's a lot of familiarity. Um, the construction of the body is uh, largely built around the success of the D800 series. It's a magnesium alloy um, structure. And the button placement is very similar. Um, due to sort of popular demand, the mode button and the ISO button have been switched over. The working professional often likes to have quick and fluid change of their ISO sensitivity without moving the camera from their eye. Okay. So to have that uh, facilitated, the ISO button is now here. Um, also, the joystick control of the focus positioning has been uh, borrowed from the D500, so you now have the joystick control here to quickly and easily move your selected focus points around your composition. Okay. Uh, but other than that... And the screen at the back, is um, that very similar to previous bodies or any other interesting features on that? Because one thing I did see when I was um, researching this was normally when you see, you know, you're looking through your photographs at the back and you're roll rolling through them, yeah. that you can hold now on the screen to quickly look through pictures or slowly um, go through them. So if you've taken, especially if you're doing, you know, a huge run of photos, it makes it much easier to view your sure, photographs. Sure, sure. So that was a great feature. Quick sc scrolling feature is, is there, which is great. Um, it should probably be, be noted that um, it's a very high resolution screen. It's actually 2.3 million dots. So a lot of detail on this <laughs> screen. Uh, it's also very angle. So the screen does come out, allowing for easy positioning of the camera for low level shots, mm -hmm. high level shots, and or copy work and macro work. Um, and now instead of the limited touchscreen capability of the D500 and the D5, it's now full touchscreen capable, right, okay. which is really exciting, um, allowing you to have full access, not just full access to all of the menu controls, but also touch to focus, which as we'll see works well with a couple of the other features on board the camera. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the, the screen is very high quality, full touchscreen, and it is uh, very angle. Um, the other 
thing to note is, of course, it has a very nice deep grip, um, which is probably more styled like the D500. So even though it weighs just a tad more than the D810, mm -hmm. when people hold the camera, they say, wow. Solid. No, <laughs> they say, wow, this is lighter. Oh, lighter. Yeah. Okay. And it's because it's so well balanced in the hand. Right, okay. So for all of you guys there waiting to get your hands on one of these babies, when you do, you're going to think, wow, that just feels right. Just feels nice. Brilliant. I watched a very interesting video at the launch of um, the D850 in uh, London, and what a show yeah. that they put on. It looked absolutely incredible, where they invited lots of high-end photographers to show off the camera and kind of give everybody a first go at it, and they had like uh, live birds there with the camera with a 400 mil lens on it, so you could have a look at that. They had set up a whole wedding, so uh, wedding photographers could have a peep at uh, looking at wedding dresses and veils, and all actors there doing um, martial arts and combat sports and everything so people could see the camera running at high speed so uh, that's a really interesting video to show the camera in action if anybody wants to look it up it's on on youtube so it seems like there is a whole dynamic range of features and we're going to go through more of these now mm -hmm. so we've talked about the resolution the iso range basically the native iso is from 64 iso to 25,600 ISO, 25,800 ISO. So a very generous range. Um, and that's, that's conservative. It is pushable, so you can actually go above and beyond that to 102,000 ISO and down to 32 ISO, um, which allows for an even greater dynamic range. And of course, one thing that's been very obvious to me as a working professional is that any camera manufacturer can put any number they want on their ISO range. It's how that camera performs at any given ISO that you know determines whether it's of uh, worth to the photographer. Um, I've actually seen a shot taken of this camera at 102,000 ISO, and there was a little bit of grain, but I'm telling you, boy, it was, it was minimal. Yeah. Very surprising. Okay. Um, and the shots I was taking at 12,800 ISO is, is great. To be able to go down to 64 ISO and even further down to 32 ISO for a landscape photographer, still life or a product photographer is a great plus as well. Mm. So talking about landscape and f um, like weddings and all those sort of things, who would you say this camera is really for? Is it just for professionals or uh, you know, does you have to be a really serious amateur to, to, to use this camera? You don't have to be. Obviously anybody who purchase this, this camera will be aware they're buying a very fine tool. Mm -hmm. They will have done some research. Um, but in the hands of a novice, you could put this onto a program mode and anybody should be able to go out into an environment, focus, compose and shoot and get absolutely beautiful results because that's the nature of the camera. That's what it's designed to do. Whether their composition will be any good or whether they'll yeah. be focusing on the right subject, mm -hmm. that's up to the user. But as far as being easy to use, yes, of course, it, it could be essentially a point and shoot camera. Mm -hmm. um, although very few people will be using it as such. One thing I have heard a lot about this camera is it being described as, you know, a multi-purpose multimedia camera mm. because not only is it absolutely brilliant in performance with photography, but obviously with video as well because we've got the big thing that everybody goes on about this has got 4K. So, 4K and 8K as well, like, is that right? Well, 8K is pretty much full resolution and what the camera does bring to the party um, and again, you'll have to excuse me at home because I'm more of a still photographer <laughs> than a videographer, so uh, I apologize in advance. Um, it has 8K time-lapse video capability, um, which I think is a first, which is taking the files as they are in their completion and, and making a time-lapse video out of that. So what that means is incredibly high resolution time-lapse video. As far as 4K video, um, it's one of the first DSLRs, if not the first, that has full frame 4K video capability. So using the whole sensor. You video guys, you know what this means. It means you can use all your really juicy <laughs> <laughs> full frame lenses and bring them to the party mm -hmm. and use those lenses as they're intended to be used. Okay. So as far as uh, creativity for the working videographer, it's a huge step, mm -hmm. you know, it really is. Okay. Um, and then the total autofocus points. 
Yeah, again, there's a, there's a, a focusing module that's been incorporated in the D5 and the D500, um, which is tried and tested and it's been very heavily lauded in the industry as being one of the fastest, uh, the most confidence-inspiring focusing modules on the market. 153 focus points. That is the, the module in here. Okay, and then continuous shooting speed. As you see the camera, seven frames a second. Um, and we, we're going to go on to something which is silent shooting in a second. Mm -hmm. But as you see it using the mechanical shutter, seven frames a second with the cameras you see it with the battery as it is. There is an accessory battery grip that's available. And if you were to purchase that and include the ENEL18B battery in the grip, it That's boosts that to up. remember it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It then is. it boosts it to what? Nine frames nine. a second. Wow. Now, you have to remember, that's nine frames a second with 45.7 megapixels and great low-light capability and fantastic dynamic range. So you that's were alluding to sort of bringing a lot on board. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then the LCD screen resolution, what is new and improved about that? Okay. I, I believe the older screens were in the region of about 1.8 uh, million dots. I, I believe this is 2.3 million dots. So a very high resolution screen. Okay. Yeah. And the metering sensor? Uh, 180k, 180,000 uh, dots, uh, again an improvement. And what that means is slightly faster focusing, but also it means that the auto white balance is able to do its job a little bit better. Um, and I believe that this camera has the ability, when in auto white balance mode, to divine better between subtle changes in ambient light conditions. So you actually have two um, automatic modes, regular auto mode and auto O. And uh, I think that might be outdoor, I'm not sure. But it's, either way, it, it provides a stunningly accurate ability to do auto white balancing. Okay, and the last techie thing is, oh no, actually we have some other interesting uh -oh. things as well. Uh, full HD frame rates. Yeah, it's, uh, this bad boy will go down into full HD on DX crop and shoot up to 120 frames a second, wow. which is, of course, super slow-mo. Uh, that is without audio, but still, it's still quite an achievement for this sort of camera. That's incredibly yeah, impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's talk about silent. Okay. <laughs> the silent shot. Because okay. <laughs> this is really interesting feature of the yeah. camera, I think. Yeah, this, this is uh, a, a lot of what we've talked about. Some of the other features will obviously appeal to different photographers who have specialized fields, um, such as, you know, the, the excellent frames per second and the dynamic range, it all comes together to making you know, a great photograph. But I think for myself, I think one of the most important features is the silent shooting. And that's the incorporation of a fully electronic shutter. Um, so there's absolutely no mechanical movement in the camera at all. And consequently, no shutter shock and absolutely no shake or movement of the camera. So for those people that are doing uh, critical work, um, such as product photography in the studio, uh, fine art landscape work, um, macro work, um, where capturing absolute detail is a premium, then the ability to have the camera make an exposure without any mechanical movement is great. Because you're squeezing every ounce of detail yes. off that 45.7 megapixels. And also, I, th I suppose things with like, you know, um, like wildlife and, and things like that as well, that, you, you know, the sound of your camera, you wouldn't want um, to scare off any animals. Or yeah, um, yeah, sure. If you have a situation where, you know, you're close. Golfers. Hey. Isn't that the other one? If, if you've got a putting situation. <laughs> it's critical. <laughs> you, you, yeah. don't, you, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to tick off the, the people who are playing golf. Um, and equally important if you're doing performing arts or theatrical work. And you're, you know, you're side stage and doing shots of a performance in progress. Mm -hmm. Then you don't want to, you know, bring attention to yourself. If you're in a corporate situation in a boardroom where a big decision is being made, being able to shoot discreetly is a big yeah. plus. Street photographers, yes. you know, again using that touch to focus with mm -hmm. the silent shutter, mm -hmm. you can have the, um, you can have the actual tiltable viewfinder out, and I could be discreetly taking your photograph right now without you knowing. That 
re- oh god when you think of it like that so creepy photographers it's, this is the camera yeah, for you yeah. <laughs> so it's quite amazing yeah that's amazing so um i think we've covered everything is there any other important features that you feel like we need to to talk about tons and i'm going to remember them just as soon as i walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> always the way isn't it and um, i know that anybody who's sitting at home drooling over your keyboard if you're watching this through your phone everybody's just thinking how much is it Well, Birmingham cameras have got an exclusive on this. The camera body is 3,899. So if you have a kidney to sell, sell it today because they're gonna be in store tomorrow. So if you want to know any more information about this um, camera, obviously you can drop in store to Birmingham cameras. You can call the store and talk to the lads, look up the website, because you know them, they know it all. Well, Adrian, you've been an absolute pleasure to interview and talk. Thank you so much for telling us all about the D850, this incredible, incredible camera from Nikon. Jules, thanks for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) So as I said, check out birminghamcameras.com for all the information. You know the lads in there and their friendly service. They'll be able to tell you anything further that you wish to know about the Nikon D850. Once again, thank you so much for watching. From me, it's Jules Call, keeping things in focus for Birmingham Cameras.